buzzers what's up football fans i'm brandon london here with the football after show here on after buzz tv today we've got a special show for you the bc lion takeover christy bueno calls in manny arsenal calls in as well and we also have luke mullinder checking in from ryderville and that's all happening now you're tuning into the destination Ooh, for TV that. super fan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Kind of caught me off guard just now. I, had, I checked the text message, and then we go right into it. Welcome to After Buzz TV football off-season show. I am your host with the most. Here live on the West Coast, Brandon London. You can catch me at Cultured Athlete on all your social media feeds. And make sure you hit up and follow After Buzz TV because without them, you wouldn't be seeing this handsome face right now. And you wouldn't be talking football. And let's get right into it. We're going to talk CFL football. We have, we have, it's the BC Lions takeover today, ladies and gentlemen. I know we've had the Red Blacks, a bunch of uh, players, uh, coaches call in from the Red Blacks. Uh, Luke Mullinder calls uh, is calling in. We actually have him on Skype now um, from Ryderville. But Christy Bueno, daughter of uh, BC Lions GM head coach, uh, the greatest CFL coach of all time, Wally Bueno, she calls in. And we also have the Manny Show, Manny Arsenal, BC Lions wide receiver, one of the most, one of the most. Uh, well, let's see, one of the most entertaining wide receivers in the CFL. But without further ado, my boy Luke Mullinder is live from Ryderville, and he's here via Skype. Luke, what's up, man? What's going on, man? What's going on after buzzers? Welcome back. Look, you got a tan, bro. You got a <laughs> yeah. tan. Look at you. Yeah, yeah. we've been in, uh, spent the last week out in Vero Beach, Florida. Um, left after I talked to you last time, uh, you Riders mini camp out there, and I'll tell you what, man, uh, there was a lot of talent. It was a fast, uh, physical uh, four days of work or three days of work on the field. And, uh, you know, Chris Jones, he's got some athletes out there uh -oh. now, and uh, it's going to be uh, really good to see, really interesting to see some of these kids in pads, um, the ones that do make it into June. The ones that make it into June, c congratulations for making it into June. But the yeah. ones, you, this mini camp, you got to cut the roster down after this mini camp. Um, you, usually, yeah. a lot of teams just bring in guys just to see how they run, what they look yeah. like with, uh, with with helmets on, how they can grasp a playbook in a situation like that. Are there any names, any no names out there who really <laughs> made a name for themselves? Man, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, you know, you would think that these mini camps are just sort of a short and shirt uh, audition. There wasn't any helmets, any pads, but man, these guys were going. Man, they got they got a ton of reps. I'm talking about into the hundreds, oh, wow. into the high hundreds, as a matter of fact, oh, wow. over these last three days, whether it was one-on-ones with the O-line and D-line, uh, they got into skelly periods, and they also did a, a fair amount of one-on-ones, um, whether it be the linebackers versus running backs or the DBs versus wideouts, man. Uh, there were some impressive names in, uh, on, every, uh, on every position. Just to go over a few of them, man, I think that uh, um, right away a guy who stuck out was um, – was uh, B.J. Coleman um, from uh, – sorry about here. I was actually looking at something else. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, B.J. Coleman right away from Tennessee Chattanooga, man. That okay. guy stuck out all weekend. Such a big guy. He looked like Tim Tebow's twin, uh, wow. but threw a lot better than him, obviously. Uh, he was a guy that stood out. Um, you know, Ryan Lankford from Illinois. Okay. Um, you know, this whole – that whole receiver – group really um there were some really shea hodge was there in camp and he he looked good uh thought marcus davis did some good things there was a ton of names man um marte sears is another impressive guy that stuck out on the defensive side of the ball he's a kid out of faulkner that chris jones actually had for a little bit in edmonton uh what really stuck out man to tell you the truth was the canadians we had guys like tevin uh tavon campbell out there from regina we had melvin abanqua uh there was a uh there was a junior's there was a uh, a junior kid from Windsor out there who was unreal, and uh, it was it was crazy because the Canadians, you know, usually when you have these, or the, you can tell the Canadians, you know, they're behind. But man, these Canadians, uh, they were unreal, man. They didn't look out of place at all. One of the guys that that really really stood out is a guy named Jordan Reeves from Brandon, Manitoba. Oh, wow. uh, I'll tell you what, man, this guy played DB 
This guy played safety. He's 6'4", 220. He's only 26 years old. Man. Raw athlete. And at times, Chris Jones even brought him down to do some one-on-ones against some old linemen. So uh, that was, the, um, that was the, the, the thing of the day over there. It was a bunch of athletes. So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, we said it on the radio, they had an athlete's camp. And that's exactly what was out there. There was some great offensive linemen, good, some good defensive linemen out there, too. So... Um, yeah, man, there was a lot of talent out there, and there's a lot of hard decisions those coaching that coaching staff is going to have to make, you know, uh, in, in inviting certain guys to uh, to their main camp in June. June's coming up. Hashtag is it June yet, ladies and gentlemen? Make sure you hashtag that when you're talking about CFL football. But we all, yep. you know, what everyone in the CFL wants to know. You know the question: Did Darian Durant take rest? Yeah. Absolutely. Darian Durant not only took reps, he took them all all three days. And uh, it was nice. Um, he, he's, he's trimmed down. He's dropped about 20 pounds, it seems. Oh. Uh, he's under uh, – he, he's well under um, his, the weight he played at last year. Um, he's going to come into camp lighter than he's ever been. Uh, uh, the one thing that stuck out about doubles was his accuracy. Now, I know this is only a mini camp, but uh, uh, he's caught on to the playbook really rather well. He likes it. Um, he, you know, to quote him, it, it's a very, you throw to a spot. You're not necessarily throwing to guys. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, uh, coach McAdoo, Stephen McAdoo, the offensive coordinator. I mean, he's done, he did a great job in Edmonton with Mike Riley, you know, and doubles is as tough as they come, you know, uh, Obviously, everybody's going to be watching for the Achilles. It's a mental thing with doubles right now, I think. He's just got to get a bunch of firsts out of the way. Like, you know, first contact on the legs, first time, you know, feeling pressure from a CFL blitz, first time, you know, really seeing safeties rotate in certain coverages and stuff, and eventually it all come to. But you know what? For the most part, he looked great, but uh, he was deadly accurate. Uh, I haven't gone to every single mini camp the Saskatchewan Rough Riders done. I uh, asked a lot of people, especially guys on the staff that have been around him for a long time. It's the most most accurate he's looked in a long, long time. So that bodes well for Ryder Nation. Ryder Nation, you heard it. Yeah. Double D's Absolutely. back, baby. Double D is back, baby. Darian Durant, <laughs> we got to get you on the show, man. I want to. I want you to call in. Hey, and if you want Double D, I'll put the cleats on for you this year if you need me to, man. Hey, look, I, man. I, I, if you need I, me hey, to. No disrespect, D, but uh, he's not going to need you to, man, because some of these, some of these. Let me let me just list. Well, that, that kind of makes you. Wide outs, before man. you do, before you do, I just want you to know you just shot me down just now talking no, about I he's not going to need me. No, I didn't shoot you down, my man. Like, it's just, I'm telling you right now. It, uh, what I, I said is, it's the demographics are changing, man. Okay. Here's the here's here's the first little bit of these wide receivers: six one six one six 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 three six three six two six foot. Six two six five, and that's just a little bit of those guys. There are some huge athletes out there that are catching the rock for him this weekend. Uh, yeah, man, the, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, in terms of uh, what they have in main camp, I don't think they're going to have a problem with size. But shoot, be London, man. I mean, I know you work out and you and you hold your clinics and your pass catching clinics, so you might still got it, man. You may as well come out and run a couple of routes here in June. Look, man, I'm an actor. <laughs> I can <laughs> yeah, act like actor. I can play football. And so I know you said you you know you kind of had to run up out of here. So yeah. real quickly, really quick, just give us the rundown on everything that's happened with the CFL or not pretty not everything, but give us what you think. Uh, your thoughts on everything that's happened this past week with the CFL? Well, there's a number of significant things. I'll tell you real quick. Uh, well, first and foremost, today, the uh, the Edmonton Eskimos locked up franchise quarterback Mike Riley through 2018. Mike. I'll tell you what, man, this is probably one of the toughest quarterbacks in the league. Um, obviously, uh, so imperative to everything they do over there in Edmonton, so that's huge. Um, that'll keep him in under contract uh, into his uh, early 30s, so uh, that's great for the Edmonton Eskimos. That's their franchise player, and they're always going to have a shot having quarterback like that uh, in their fold. Uh, Peter Diakowski out there in Hamilton also re-signed. Uh, he extended through 2017. B, I know that you know how important it is for quality Canadians. Uh, yep. Peter Diakowski also uh, mans a spot on the um, in the CFLPA. He's the, I think he's the treasurer now. Um, well, but he's got some uh, he's in some type of role there but uh, you know he's a mainstay in the Hamilton commu community as well um, he's been there for so long you know he's one of those guys if you, if you think about Thai cats who have who have played their entire careers in Hamilton that, that, that deserve to compete for great cups he's one of the guys that comes to uh, 
comes to thought. And uh, and and you know what? Uh, one of the more interesting things is earlier on in the week is uh, Tommy Condell resigning in Hamilton uh, uh, for family yeah. reasons. You know, yeah. and uh, you know how we go about family reasons. That That's could be a number of things. But uh, losing Condell in Hamilton, it's going to be interesting to see the type of dynamic that Ken Austin goes to, whether he hires another guy or whether he just you know takes the load on himself. I know that it's probably a little bit easier now with Eric Tillman's, um, you know, taking the GM role over there in Hamilton. So uh, Hamilton faces another tough situation. Uh, but, you know, if there's a coach that preaches b the ability to deal with adversity and uh, come out on, a, on the other side of it, uh, Ken Austin's great at doing that. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure Hamilton will have a plan, and I, I still think they're going to be uh, super competitive over there in the East, man. So that's, uh, that's, that's some things that have gone on over the CFL lately. You heard him. We could, I want to call this segment Live with Luke. So for now, when I tweet, Live with Luke, ladies and gentlemen, he's been on every time. Hey, Luke, I, I don't know if I'm going to be on next week because I'll be home in Virginia. I yeah. Got, I think you, we're talking about family. I got to go see my family, man. I've been I've been out here in L.A. for way too long. Um, yeah, man. So I'm gonna well, be it's going to be good for you, man, because yeah. your football, you guys got a football pedigree over there. So yeah. uh, it'll be fun to get out on the field with your brother and your father. I know that. Well, go ahead and tell the people where they can find you, Luke. Hey, man, at LukeMall95 on Twitter and uh, hit up our blog site, ProPerspective.ca. We actually put throwing another podcast up here on Friday. So, hey, uh, make sure yeah. you guys go check them out. I appreciate you, homie. All go right, do brother. what you got to do, man. Appreciate you, Absolutely. ladies and gentlemen. That was Luke Mullinder, former CFL defensive tackle, Alouettes, uh, uh, the tie Cats, and you know him from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He's up there. Uh, he, you, see, you heard him. You see how tan that boy is. You see he's tan. When you go down to Florida and you're down in that Florida heat for those mini camps, I come back crispy, very crispy. So what we're waiting on now, we're going to get Christy Bueno live on the line. I can't wait to talk to her. I've been a big fan of, of that family um, for a long time. Just her, who her dad is, uh, Coach Wally Bueno uh, of the BC Lions. I can't, I, I can't wait. Because I've always, secretly, I know I was a Montreal Alouette, but here's a confession. I kind of wanted to be a BC Lion at times, too, just because we would fly out there, hang out with those guys uh, after the game, go out and such. It was, it was, it was a good time out there in Van City. So we're going to get her live on the line. But we're going to get her thoughts on the BC offseason season. What's going on? Um, everything that's going on in the in, in the future with the with the BC Lions. We also have BC Lions wide receiver Manny Arsenal, aka the Manny Show. And you heard Luke Mullen. Ah, you know what? That's what I didn't get a chance to ask Luke about. Is is the BC Lions wide receivers and everything that they have going on? So um, we're waiting to get Christy online. I'm actually going to send her a DM right now to make sure we can get her on. But the biggest thing, what I took from what Luke just said, one thing that's inspirational to me, being a wide receiver and knowing, and being a wide receiver who has played, remember, I was a Montreal Alouette when AC, during the AC realm, during the AC, uh, uh, yeah, realm, region, uh, whatever, during dynasty, the AC dynasty, to be able to play with a Hall of Fame quarterback that's the biggest thing in the world for a wide receiver. You take pay cuts to be able to continue to play with the quarterback of that caliber. And for Darian Durant to be back in Ryderville, to be healthy, and to be taking all the snaps, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be, it's going to be quite, quite the year for the Rough Riders. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we have on the line BC Lions Den host, CFL analyst. Uh, I, I don't even. I, there's there's a long list. I don't even know where where to, to to begin with the list. Christy Bueno on the line, calling live from Vancouver. That is. Are you in Vancouver? I'm in actually Surrey. Okay, Surrey. Oh. So, so because Sean White, you know, you know the kicker Sean White, right? I do actually. He played. Uh, he was a kicker on my brother's football team, which is where he was first discovered. Actually, so. Oh, okay, so we anytime we used to go out and play BC, we would take the tr the Sky Rail and we'd go to Surrey, and his parents would pick us up and have a uh, have have a meal there and such. I just know that the south of Surrey is like the hood up there. Is that the hood? 
No, no, that would be, well, you know, you, you got to be careful because I, I know the city of Surrey is working really hard to clean up North Surrey, um, which is actually where the practice facility is. Uh, okay. I have the blessing to live in South Surrey. A lot of the coaches oh, okay. uh, mm. and my dad actually lives out here. So it's, this is closest to White Rock. So, uh, you know, we do make it known we're in South Surrey, but, uh, you know, North Surrey is cleaning up, uh, especially since uh, I've been here. Okay, I got the North side and the South side wrong on that. My apologies. Well, well welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you for coming on today. Um, I'm going to grill you about BC Lions football. Okay, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm hey, anytime you want to talk BC Lions, and, uh, you know, it's interesting because I'm actually on the other side of the mic today. Usually I'm yeah. the one doing the interviews, so pressure's on. So how long have you been um, a host for the BC Lions, uh, the Lions Den? Because I remember I, I reached out to you this year trying to get on the show, and you're like, I'm sorry, it's only BC Lions alumni only, and I was like, darn. So <laughs> how long have you been running that and doing that? Well, you know, actually, uh, I've been doing interviews with the Lions probably since YouTube started. I think okay. it was back in 2007, 2008, really when uh, media was uh, trying to get in the forefront of getting to know the players and whatnot. Uh, Chris Pollock and the marketing team asked me if I would come on. I was working somewhere else at the time, and, you know, it was something, if I, want, if I got to talk football with the guys, I was in. So it just kind of took it from there, and, uh, you know, it was a, the, the panel was a concept that we adopted um, you know, Grey Cup had it last year here at BC Place, mm -hmm. and also the Hamilton Tiger Cats do a really nice job of a panel. And uh, we sat down as a unit and talked about one of the things that we could, you know, enhance the in-game experience. And uh, the marketing team at the Lions did a great job and and invested in a, a really slick desk and, uh, you know, asked me to be the host and I couldn't turn it down. And, you know, the alumni love doing it. The guys are amazing. They make me look good. So <laughs> anytime we can uh, set up the matchup that's happening each game, uh, it you know, it, that that's always fun for me. I'm glad. I mean, you, you guys are doing a great job. Now, it's time to talk BC Lions <laughs> off-season football. There's been a lot of moves made, a lot of things happening. Your father uh, taking over as head coach again. This, this, is, this, is, he, is he and Jim Pop in some sort of competition on who's the best GM slash head coach? Because every two years, one's a head coach, one's a GM, head coach, GM. But kind of explain how that happened and, and why that had to happen. You know, it, it's been interesting because this is something a lot of people have asked me. Um, you know, how do you feel about your dad, Wally, I guess, to be professional, <laughs> um, to, to come out and, and be the coach again? And, you know, had you asked me two years ago or, or, or later, I would have said, you know what, I'm not interested. Uh, we went out on top as a daughter. That's exactly how you want your dad to mm -hmm. go out, winning at home. It, I mean, it really doesn't get much better than that. But, you know, as the year progressed and I, I just was able to see – um, you know, frustrations and, and just the challenges of not being in the dual role. And, you know, you, you, you want nothing but the best for your coaches. We were excited to have Benny as head coach and then uh, Jeff Tedford. That, that was the plan. I mean, the plan wasn't for my dad to come back as coach. But, you know, it was interesting because I think I really had a shift in uh, Grey Cup this year. I had a lot of players, veterans and young guys come up to me just out of the blue, you know, talking and, and talking football and, and really telling me how much they appreciate my dad and respect him. Uh, and just, you know, feel comfortable with him. And, you know, we, my dad and I have very good boundaries, you know, respecting the organization. And there's a lot of things that I don't know on purpose. Uh, it's just easier that way. I know, obviously, the day that it happens. But until then, I can speculate. I mean, I wasn't born yesterday, but uh, it was all speculations. And, you know, I, I was laying in my hotel room. I think it was the Friday and, and after I had uh, gone out and, you know, after the player awards and whatnot. And, and I, I wrote my dad a text message saying, you know what, dad, I've been thinking and I have no idea what's going on, but if you're, if you're going to be a coach, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm ready. I'm hundred percent in, if you're not, I'm okay too. But I just want you to know that like, I have, you have my 110% support. And uh, so then he calls me, he's like, you know, what makes you say that? And so we had a good conversation, you know, obviously he didn't say anything at that time. Um, but yeah, I think it's worked out for the best. Smart man. I mean, I'm a I'm a son of a coach as well. My father uh, was just the head football coach for the University of Virginia. He's now coaching D line at the University of Maryland. So I know I know exactly how you feel. Can you kind of do you are you frustrated when you hear things on the media and such, and you want to reach out to people and be like, hey, I, I heard what you said about my dad, a hole. You know, <laughs> kind of talk about the frustrations of one being in the media and having to report on your father and hearing the things reported on your father. 
Yeah, it's funny because, you know, growing up, I mean, you, I mean, I was a tomboy, right? So, and I'm an all or nothing person. So you yeah. either got involved and understood the sport and wanted to be around my dad, or you probably wouldn't see him. And my mom did an amazing job, uh, you know, getting us involved and stuff. And so I would rough up a few people <laughs> in the hallways, um, true story, in junior high and high school. Like I didn't take, I didn't take nothing from nobody, but you know, as you get older, and now I actually work for the organization full time. So you're all encompassing, like you yeah. really can't escape, especially with social media and whatnot. Yeah. So I try really hard not to read certain things, but um, you know, I would be lying to you if I said I never called into a radio show and disguised my voice and uh, you know, uh, oppose the uh, owner, not with the lions, thank God, but um, I probably wouldn't have a job by then. But, uh, you know, so so there are, is the occasion where I step in, but I try really hard just to stay focused. I mean, I see how hard he works and the lions fans really, you know, they're, they're lucky because, you know, I think one day when he retires, I think everyone's going to realize how lucky they were exactly. to have him and nobody wants to win more than my dad. Exactly. Trust me on yeah. that one. All right, so one of the biggest things I feel as though has happened in the BC Lions uh, offseason, well, two of the biggest things was uh, bringing Travis Lule back, re-signing Travis Lule, uh, which I'm a big fan of him um, as a competitor, as a quarterback, and who our next guest after you, uh, locking Manny Arsenal, the Manny show, up for another two-year deal. The offense has to get back on track, back to where, what they were. Is these two, these two things... Do you feel as though they're a step in the right direction in terms of for the future, or is it just something to just to quiet the fans? Because there's been a lot of chirps about the offense over the last one to two years. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think also, um, you know, Manny is, you know, he had a slow start this last year, but really picked it up in the second half of the season. And I'm really excited because uh, I love his chemistry with Travis. I love his chemistry with Jonathan Jennings. And, you know, Travis was huge. I mean, you played in the CFL, you know that, uh, you know, whether you're the starter or number two, you're going to play. Yeah. And a lot of times, I mean, especially last year, look how many number one guys went down and number two, number three, I think even number four in Montreal had to come out and, and compete. And, you know, to have a guy like Travis, who is a leader, who understands his role, who's ready to compete. And I don't think people understand he's actually thrown a lot this off season, which is probably the first time in three years wow. uh, because of his injuries. So, you know, he, he, he's coming into camp and he's competing. And I think, you know, they have a really good relationship uh, between him and Jonathan Jennings. And I think we'll learn from each other. Uh, we'll only make it better for them to compete with one another. And then obviously with Manny on the receiving end, I mean, you don't get much better than having those two quarterbacks, but then also too, I think, the other thing that we did was we re-signed Jovano Lafoye and uh, and Chris Rainey. I mean, those are two huge playmakers uh, in terms of protecting the quarterback. And then, you know, obviously with Chris Rainey on special teams, but then also what he can do in the offense, which is what we saw, you know, towards the second half of the season. So uh, I, I definitely think that our offense will be revamped this year, and I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it too, because uh, low-key, like I said uh, to, to Luke Mullinder, there was times where I was like, you know, if things don't work out with the Alouettes, you know, I, 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 hope, I hope Mr. Wally calls me. You know, I hope I really get to go out there. Now, on, on the defensive side of the ball, huge, huge move signing uh, defensive tackle Brian Turner Jr., oh, who got let go by Winnipeg. And you also get Solomon Eliminian back. Kind of explain in terms of, like, defensively, the, the impact Solomon, ha Solomon has out there when he's out there and he's healthy. Oh man, he he is a beast. Like I love watching that guy play. Yeah. And when him and Adam Big Hill are out there together, definitely hands down, we have the best linebacking crew in the league. Like there's no ifs ands or buts about it. Like I for agree sure. And he is on schedule. He is doing really really well. I talked to him a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know he mentally he's strong. He is ready to move forward. And I think he's gotten even hungrier, which is scary. Like I would be scared if I was on offense playing against that guy because. Adam Big Hill, I mean, he comes prepared, he comes ready to play, and now you have Solomon Aluminium back, um, just ready to get out there and do and be able to help with his teammates. And then Brian Turner, man, that guy is a beast, and he's in the prime of his career. Yeah. I mean, he's physical, he is able to attack the quarterback. You know, our defensive line struggled for the first bit of the year, which, like you said, you heard a lot of chirping, and then they did that six-man rotation, and, you know, he's going to come in and compete, and I know... That's a big thing that's going to be at, in camp this year of like which of the best six guys 
are going to uh, do the best and be able to to get after that quarterback because you know as cliche as it is you win in the CFL in the trenches in the trenches yeah you you know your football girl I see you. hey <laughs> it's glad to have you on. I, I've been wanting to talk football with with the uh, with the woman on this show for a long time I had someone on here it kind of didn't work out you know I kind of that's that's neither here nor there but the orange helmet awards i saw you tweeting live tweeting from there cameron wake came up uh g roy simon the superman himself was there can you kind of explain um that night and and what kind of went on that night yeah so orange helmet awards is really the lion's signature event um the late president and ceo bobby ackles uh really wanted to emphasize on saluting and supporting amateur football. He came up from the NFL, which obviously grassroots football is huge down there. And he wanted to acknowledge the great work from the provincial teams to the pioneers, to the coaches. Um, and you know, all the proceeds go to amateur football. We, we just did our 13th year uh, this year. And before the event, we raised over $750,000 for amateur football for wow. all across BC. Wow. I guarantee you, we probably went over that 800,000 mark this year, which is a huge success. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, it's like Jamie Terrace said, it is the Oscars for amateur football. I mean, you get to go, you get to be around guys like, like you said, G. Roy Simon and Wally Buono and Marco Iannuzzi was there, Sean Gore was there. Uh, Roly Lambala was there. So, you know, I was a soccer player growing up and to be able to have something like that would have been just huge. But, you know, you have to understand that the importance of grassroots football not only helps kids, you know, get off the street and, and do something with their life, but it also helps the football in BC. So your better your grassroots program is, the better the football in BC is, which obviously helps the Canadian game and the universities and whatnot. So, um, you know, and then having Cam Wake, I mean, that guy is unbelievable. Unbelievable. He, it was so fun to catch up with him and reminisce about the good old days. And I know he was only here for two years, but, you know, our production team did a really good job and put a highlight pack in him. And I was losing my mind just watching how good he was right off the rush. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was salivating, wishing that he was still in the CFL, but super happy for him um, to be in Miami. And, you know, one thing I was really impressed with him was after all the success that he's had, he's still extremely humble, yeah. but also appreciative of where he's come from. I mean, he, I don't know if you know the story, but um, he actually went to the wrong location for the workouts. And, uh, you know, my dad's pretty strict in terms of having, you don't show up uh, to workout, you don't get signed. And, and Bob Obilovich really talked him into uh, uh, signing Cam without even seeing him and just going on, you know, trust factor there. and. I remember in training camp, I was visiting, I think we were in Abbotsford at the time, and my dad's like, you gotta see this guy, like he's unbelievable. Yeah. So we're watching film and he is just annihilating the offensive line. Um, but you know, he came up too from Vancouver. He didn't even come, most of the time the guys come in for the day, they spend the night and then they head over the next day. But he came a couple, for a couple of days, he brought his fiance, wanted to show her where he first basically began as Cam Wake, the football player, you know, obviously after, in terms of pro, and uh, came to the Surrey facility, said hi to everyone, went to show her his old apartment. Um, wow. And then after the event stayed until everybody that wanted a picture or wanted an autograph, he signed, he, he was very gracious. Um, and obviously he speaks very well. And so he has a great story to tell. Yeah, great story. I was in rookie camp with him with the New York Giants um, one year and then when he had signed to go to the Miami Dolphins, that was my that was towards the end of my years with the Miami Dolphins, and he came in in like an Acura, like a regular two door Acura. I'm looking when he you know he pulls up, I'm like this dude, this is the dude they signed. By the end of the mini camps and when that signing bonus, I guess that direct deposit went through, he pulled up in a BMW. So I was like, Ooh, oh yeah, okay, never mind then. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is that he actually. And we found this out too of the night, which I thought was pretty funny. I don't know where he got these BC Lions sandals. I don't know if the team got them one day or whatever, but he still wears them every day oh, to wow. this day just that's to remember wonderful. where he's come from. Wow. So, you know, I think that speaks volume to his character. And yeah, I mean, he's living the life right now and I'm looking forward to watching him. I know he's he said he started running uh, either a couple weeks ago or he's starting running pretty soon here. So I'm looking forward to watching him against Miami. And I mean, how can you not cheer for that guy? Yeah, how can you not? Well, go ahead and tell the people where they can find you um where they can find you on social media and such yeah so if you want to follow me i give you the inside source the lion's den i'm at christy buono on twitter at christy buono on instagram um yeah i would love to talk football with you anytime and uh i'm really looking forward to the upcoming season i mean there's lots of exciting players that are going into like i said their 
uh, their second, third year. We were a very young team. We've signed some veteran players for uh, competition. And, you know, talking with the guys, too, they, uh, they're excited. I mean, they're ready to compete, and they feel like this is a fresh start. They want to play for my dad. They want to play for the coaches that are at hand. So I'm really excited for training camp to start. I'm excited, too. I'm rooting for you all this. This year, I'm a BC Lions fan, ladies and gentlemen. Right, I'm going to go ahead and sweet. say it. Jim Pop, my bad, homie, my bad, man. But I, I got to go for the Lions this year. Well, thanks, Christy. Thanks for ha uh, coming on. I'm definitely going to reach out to you to have you on again pretty soon. Hey, anytime. Thanks. Honestly, it was a pleasure. Uh, this was a lot of fun, like I said, being on the other side of the mic. And anytime <laughs> you want to talk football and BC Lions, I'm your girl. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Hey, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I, I haven't had any BC Lions on this show just yet, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So that was great to have her on there. Obviously, just by her last name, who her father is, you know she knows football. You know she knows BC Lions football. We're definitely going to get her back. We are about to call, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't, a, this isn't about to be the football offseason show anymore because this next guest that comes on, he, he's going to take over. It's the Manny Show with co-host Brandon London. We're calling BC Lions wide receiver number 84, Manny Arsenal, a.k.a. The Manny Show. And you could hear, you hear what she just said. She just said it was uh, Travis Lule, who's the longtime BC Lions quarterback, his first offseason actually throwing. He's throwing more than, he, than he's thrown in a long time. And for you haters out there who don't know football, who don't know how important uh, an offseason is in terms of CFL football or just for quarterbacks in general, reps, when you're coming off an in injury, the biggest thing you have to do is get as many reps as you can. I'm, I got I to gotta text uh, Manny right now to make sure we have the right Skype name. There we go. Um, that's the biggest thing is reps. And coming in to a season, coming into mini camps and such, you have to have that mentality. Football is 80% mental. You have to have that mentality where, okay, I know my arm is good. I can throw. I can do this. You know, you have to have that, that comfortableness in you. And live on the line right now, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this isn't a football offseason show anymore. This is the Manny Show now. The Manny Show takeover. I'm just the co-host. Lions wide receiver Manny Arsenal. What's up, bro? Man, what's going on? What's, where, where, where you at? Where you spend your off-seasons at? Um, right now I'm in uh, Frisco, Texas. Okay. Down in Dallas. All right, so you you, you be down there D town boogieing, huh? So what, <laughs> nah, so, I let them have that. They they, they could do all that. So uh, like, what's the off season been like so far, man? Like in terms of working out and just congratulations on signing that new deal. Can I borrow twenty? Oh yeah, I got you. <laughs> Next time I see you. But nah, it's um. It actually been good, man. I um the early stages of my off season, once they December through like March is when I usually work my strength phase. Um I compete in CrossFit, but right now I'm down in Dallas just for straight speed and agility portion of it. But um I can't complain. Finish a season healthy is all you can ask for, to that's be honest all, with yeah, you. Yeah, that's all you can ask for. Hold on, did I did I hear you mention you do you compete in CrossFit? Yes, um, I compete in CrossFit, so that's what I do for my. It's really my hobby, but it's also my <laughs> my workout <laughs> style too. So like, I actually watch competitions and things of that sort. But I competed in two in January up in um Cologne area, and one I was in um North Vancouver. So yeah, that's what I. That's my little hobby plus what I do for strength right there. What, what place did you come in? I know you didn't let some and, some some doctor or some uh, and some lawyer. You know what's you. crazy though? A, a CrossFit athlete. You know what? That's like somebody coming on a football field trying to tell you they can outplay you. Oh yeah. You really got to respect their craft. Okay. But um, it was what 70, 60, 70 guys. I got eleventh at North Vancouver, and when I went to Okanagan, we competed on a team. And we got second, but what's crazy, I just found out I might be going to regionals in Portland on the 20th, 21st to compete Damn. in the actual, like, CrossFit games, the ones that be on TV, um, trying to get there. So we'll see. All right. So, I mean, that's how you started the off season off. You're probably yeah. back catching balls. You got mini camp coming up. You just signed a new uh, an extension. Travis Lule is back. Kind of explain the goals for self. And for the offense this year, because there's, there's been chirps. There's been chirps. Well, 
the goals for myself, to be honest with you, man, is just, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do some big things. I, I told myself I want at least 18, 1900 some yards, you know, double digits touchdowns mm -hmm. and how the catches come, they come. But I just figure for me to help the team, I got to get my individual goals. It might sound selfish, but I figure if I'm doing my job, I'm helping the man on the side of me or the other 11 and shoot as far as the offense, man. I just hope we could come out and click, you know. Um, that's what sell tickets. Um, people want to see a show. People want to see an offense that can move the ball and score touchdowns, but we can't have as many dead moments or wait until week 13 to jail as a team. It's yeah. something that got to hit off in training camp. So I'm just making sure I do what it is I have to do. So come May 27th in training camp, I'm like a rookie. You know, I'm fighting for a job trying to get a job and, and keep that same little mindset and approach that if every man do his job, the rest take care of itself. You feel me? The rest take care of itself. That's And I hate it when people, I hate it when it's like, I know what you're saying about I don't want to be selfish, and, and but you know you have to take care of self. And, right. and you know how people are like, oh, there's no I in team, Manny. You know, you, it's, it's team first. You have to do this and you have to do that. But yeah. what people don't realize is, is a competitor, that Kobe spirit, if I take care of what I have to take care of, it makes us better. That's just exactly. the competitiveness. Exactly. So I, I wanted to clear that up for the people out there because I don't I don't want no hate tweets going towards you. But <laughs> what, another big thing that's happened for you all is, is Coach Wally Bueno is, is back as, as head coach. You've gone through two head coaches since then. Kind of talk how you felt when you saw that news and, and like kind of explain what what's the difference in the last two coaches you had compared to him? Oh, well, it was crazy. Wally brought me in in 2009 and 10, so he's been my head coach before. Yeah. So um, coming into BC, you know, um, that's who I had. And I say the biggest difference between the two head coaches, Coach Benny, I liked him a lot. Coach Tepper was also a good guy, but the biggest difference from 09 to the 13 and um, 15 season that passed was the culture. Um, when I came in in 09, you know, um, the locker room, the locker room was tight. Um, you know, everybody was gelling where you didn't have to play for the coaches. You played for the man on side of yeah. you. But when I look back at last year, man, it's like a lot of guys was lost, man. It wasn't that, that kill or be killed mentality, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm thinking hopefully with Wally coming back, you know, he's a straightforward guy. He's going to tell you what it is. Look, you're not producing or you are producing. Um, so, you know, guys don't really have to just walk around, you know, little butthole super duper tight and yeah. nervous or walking <laughs> on eggshells. It's like you got to put up or shut up. And that's one thing I like. And from looking at the, the transactions, um, with all the depth that they bringing in in each position, yeah. looks as if they're gonna have a training camp where guys actually competing. And that's the one thing I like most that got me excited, the fact we all competing for a spot. So no one's handed anything. You have to earn it. And I think by guys having to earn a spot, they'll value their position much more in the 2016 season. What do you, and, and I ask every player that comes on this show, for you, for the BC Lions this year, is yeah. it Grey Grey Cup or is it Grey Cup or bust? And don't don't give me PC. I don't, we don't do PC on here. I got a new logo on this. I got a new logo on the show and everything now, so I, I feel official. Yeah. Is it is it Grey Cup, Cup or Grey Cup? Is it Grey is it Grey Cup or bust for this season? If y'all don't at least go to the Grey Cup, do you say this season's a bust? Oh yeah, it, it has to be a bust because you got to look at it. Um, we right now we got two horses in the stable that can get the job done. Whether it's Lou Leia Jennings, yeah. Um, up front they didn't rebuild the offensive line. You know, Javon Alafoye is coming back. Yeah. Plus the addition of the Canadians that's finally healthy. We're gonna go with American running back. Plus the receivers they bringing in. You know, Nick Moore back and he showed that he can be a thousand yard receiver. Mm -hmm. Um, the Canadians, hopefully they step their game up and we get some guys through the draft. And as um, far as Americans, they're going to find some folks at these workouts. And then you look at defense. Um, they have their same coordinator. It was just a few pieces missing due to the injury bug that you can't, you know, do anything about. about. Solomon will be back. Big Hill coming off an outstanding D. Um, we lost who? Cord and a few guys. 
um, during a free agent period that didn't resign or whatnot, but they didn't plug in some vets like Stu and other guys. So if everybody do their job, there's no reason why, um, you know, we don't be at the Great Cup this year. And that's not just talking. But if you just look at it, it was a quiet free agent because they got what the team actually needed mm-hmm. other than just wants. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So they addressed the weak areas. Hopefully guys show up in training camp ready to go i'm not going there looking for any friends it's strictly business and i hope they have the same mindset too hey i needed that oh that's, that gets me fired up man that makes me want to go put my cleats on but not really because <laughs> once once that knee start yeah. aching again i'm like All right, i'm gonna just go sit down read read this script hey last yeah. question last question because we got to wrap this up last question do you still not respect the montreal alouettes defense hey man you know what um <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the, the, the beat riders assassinated me for that. But nah, you know what? I, 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 you know what? Ain't nothing changed. I feel the same way. There you Until go. somebody just line up and stop me, that's just going to be my reply there for all the little go. DBs out there. I respect them as a person. I just don't respect their game. So clearly they need to step it up. You know, they do a lot of jaw jabbering and not making plays. Hey, go ahead, Kanye. Mic drop on that one, man. We're going we go <laughs> to we go end on that last one. Hey, go ahead and tell the people where they can find you on social media. Man, the Manny Show 84 on um, Instagram, Manny Show 84 on Twitter, and Mentor Manny on Snapchat. Hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. I'm looking forward to big things this year, bro. All right, thanks a lot. Hey, thanks, man. It's, that's that's this is why the CFL on TSN or TSN you need to hire me to bring me in for Paul La Police's job. I get them to say the unpolitically correct answers. I was a former CFL football player. I played with a lot of these guys. I know them. They're going to talk to me the way that we talk in the locker room. This is all locker room talk, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to thank Luke Mullinder for calling in. I want to thank Christy Bueno for calling in. We're definitely going to have you back on. And I want to thank the Manny Show, a.k.a. Manny Arsenal, for calling in. Ladies and gentlemen, that was probably one of the best shows I've had on here. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for watching the AfterBuzz TV off-season football off-season show i don't know about next week i'm going home to virginia so i'll let you know if we're going to be back on but i'm brandon london hit me up at cultured athlete thanks for watching from executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire AfterBuzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, bu- 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 buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.